At one point in your life, your faith was strong. You believed in God, you trusted in God, you went to church, you got involved in church, you read your Bible, you prayed for other people, but somewhere along the line, circumstances in your life have taught you that God cannot be trusted. You still believe in God, but you are struggling lately to believe in the goodness of God and the fact that God wants the very best in your life. So if anything that I just said resonates with you in this video, I'm going to share with you how you can restore your faith when your faith has gotten off track. That's coming up today on The Beat. Hey, my friend, welcome back to The Beat. My name is Alan Parr. Thank you so much for tuning in. If this is your first time here, it's a pleasure. If you want to know the entire story of the Bible, click the link in the description box below. If you enjoy this video, consider subscribing. Hit that little bell notification so you won't miss a beat. Okay, so if you've been walking with the Lord for any length of time, you know that it is very possible for your faith in God to start slipping. So here are five very practical things that you can do to get your faith restored and get it back on track. Step number one is to read faith stories in the Bible. And I know what you're saying. You're like, Brother Alan, that's the problem. I don't want to read the Bible, but hang on with me. Romans chapter 15, verse four says this. Such things, speaking of the Old Testament, were written in the scriptures long ago to teach us. And the scriptures give us what? Hope and what? Encouragement as we do what? Wait patiently for God's promises to be fulfilled. My friend, that is exactly probably where you are today. You're waiting patiently for God to fulfill some promises in your life. And because God has not fulfilled those promises, you're getting frustrated and waiting on God. And as a result, your faith in God is slipping. So I want to encourage you to read some of the Old Testament people like Abraham, who had to wait years and years to have his first child, even though God had promised that he would have a child when he was 75. He didn't have his first child through his wife, Sarah, until he was around 100 years old. Then you can look at stories like Joseph, who spent 13 years of his life in prison and in the palace of Potiphar before he was able to be elevated to the place where he believed God would have him to live out and fulfill his purpose. You can look at stories like Hannah who went year after year after year waiting to have a child even though all of the women around her were popping out babies left and right and yet she still had to trust God in order to give her a baby. You can look at people like Naomi and Ruth who lost loved ones and could have had every reason to dis, uh, to be disappointed in God and to give up faith in God and believe that God wasn't good anymore. But yet and still, God restored that and gave Ruth a husband whose name was Boaz. You can look at the story of David who said several times throughout the Psalms, God, why oh why have you forsaken me? Why do you forget me, God? Why are you hiding your face from me? You can look at all of these people and there is one common denominator. Even though at one point in their life, they were down in the dumps, even though their faith was struggling at certain times, God brought them through every single time. And my friend, whenever you go back and you read faith stories in the Bible, it just confirms in your mind, yes, God can do this for me because he has done it for the people in the past. Step number two that is super important if you're trying to restore your faith is to engage with other people of faith. Now, I'm not talking about people who are down in the dumps and God isn't doing anything in their life. You can hang out with them. But if you really want to restore your faith, you've got to get around some people who are also people who have faith and trust in God and have testimonies of what God has done in their life. Let me read to you Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, which says, and let us not neglect our meeting together. In other words, don't neglect what I'm saying. Get together with other Christians. Why? Because it says here, as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. So I'm going to tell you a quick story of how this worked out for me in my life. Some of you all may know that I didn't get married until I was 40 years old. I got married on my 40th birthday, November 15th. 2015 to the love of my life. But up to that point, I was frustrated as a single guy. I wanted to be married so bad. I wanted to have children. I mean, I was absolutely obsessed with it. I was desperate to find that love of my life 
And for whatever reason, for a series of reasons, it just kept eluding me. I kept going from relationship to relationship, trying to find love, looking for love in all the wrong places, and it just wasn't working out for me. And I found myself in a season where my faith started to slip. I still believed in God. I still went to church. I was still you know, trusting God and all of that, but I was, I was, I was struggling to trust that God wanted the best for me, that God even had anything great left for me in terms of my personal life. Well, check this out. I had a friend of mine who I played chess with at the time. His name is Marvin. If you're watching this video, Marvin, I want to thank you for your faith investment in my life. Marvin and I played chess together for years and we were both single and we were well into our late thirties. He was a little bit older. He was in his mid forties. But one day, Marvin met the love of his life. He started uh, going over to England and, and hanging out with this girl. He brought her back to the States. They got married. He popped out like three kids in like three years. And I was still left single. And so I was, I could have really um, struggled to trust God. I could have believed that God didn't have anything left for me. But when I saw how God blessed my friend Marvin, who got married at the age of, I believe, 42 years old and started having children at the age of 42 and had three children in three years, it gave me hope to believe that if God can do this for my friend, then I just need to be patient and be obedient and wait and trust. And God might be able to do something similar for me in my life. See, when you put yourself around other people who are faith, uh, people who have faith and trust God, it will encourage you to wait on God and not only encourage you that God can do it, but God does still do it today. The third thing that I want you to do if you're trying to restore your faith is to identify exactly what might be causing the block in your faith relationship with God. Now, here's what I mean. Normally, if you pinpoint somebody whose faith is struggling, it's typically because there was something that they expected God to do for them, or there's something that happened in their life that didn't quite go the way they planned. It could be a loss, it could be the fact that they didn't get a job that they wanted to. It could be a failed relationship. It could be some other circumstance going on in their life. It could be um, the fact that they are disappointed in God because God didn't give them something that they thought God should. I wanna encourage you to really go back to the place where you found your faith slipping and ask yourself this very simple question. Am I the only person that this is happening to? Or is this just something that happens as a result of being a human being on this planet. So what right do we really have to be angry at God and not have faith in God when the very thing that we want was not something that he ever promised us that he would give us in the first place? And the fourth thing that I wanna encourage you to do if you're trying to restore your faith, and this is a super simple one, just practice gratefulness. And you say, brother, I hear you, but that's tough for me because I'm not feeling God right now. Listen, what the enemy wants to do in your life and in my life is to constantly get us, listen to me, constantly get us to focus on the things that we do not have. He wants us to focus on the fact that you don't have a child and all your friends do, or you're not married and all your friends are married, or you don't make six figures and all your friends make six figures, or whatever it is that you're trusting God for, or you want God to do in your life, he wants you obsessed. He wants you fixated on that. Whenever I was single, he wanted me fixated on the fact that I was not married, but he wanted me to, to neglect or not consider or be grateful about the fact that I had great health. I had a great family. I was used by God in ministry. People's lives were being changed. I had a great church. I had a great group of single friends that I was hanging out with. I had all sorts of reasons to be grateful, but I wasn't practicing gratefulness because I was fixated on the one thing that I felt God uh, uh, was, was supposed to do for me that he wasn't doing. Now, I want to say this too. When you look at the story of the nation of Israel in the Old Testament, there's one major thing that hindered them from moving into the promised land that kept them stuck in the wilderness for 40 years. And that was mumbling, that was complaining, that was ungratefulness. So my friend, if you want to be stuck in the same season that you're in, continue mumbling, continue complaining, and continue being ungrateful. But if you want God to elevate you to the next season, I don't know when he's gonna do that, but I can assure you that God wants us to practice gratefulness. And the fifth and final thing that I want to encourage you to do if you're struggling in your faith is to develop a morning routine. Now, Brother Allen, that's the problem. I don't want to do the morning routine. I don't want to study the Bible. I have no motivation for it. Listen, 
Don't worry about the feeling. Don't try to attach a feeling to it. Let me say this again. Don't look for the feeling. Don't try to say, okay, I'm not feeling it. The point of this is to develop a discipline, to develop a habit in your life that as you do it more, the feelings will come. Don't try to feel it at this moment. Just develop the habit. Now, let me give you a very simple template that you can do. Number one, wake up every morning and just confess your sin. Just let God speak to your heart in terms of whether there's something in your life that you need to confess. Number two, pray for other people. That will help you get your focus off of yourself and onto other people so that you can intercede for them and not focus on your own situation. Number three, pray for yourself. Ask God for whatever it is that you're trusting him for and do not give up on prayer just because God has not done it for you in your life yet. And then finally, get into the word of God. You don't have to be there forever. It could be five minutes. It could be 10 minutes. It could be a paragraph. It could be a verse or whatever. And all of that may take you 15 minutes a day. Just start small, developing that habit, that morning rhythm, that morning routine to get your day started off on the right track. And my friend, I can assure you that as you do those things that help you connect with God in whatever way is best for you. I also forgot one, worship music. Put some worship music on, your favorite worship music, and just meditate on the words of that song and what that song means to you and what God means to you as you listen to those words. It will really, really help uh, reconnect you with God so that your faith will be restored. So my friend, I don't know where you might be right now in terms of your faith, but let me just say it's normal, it's natural if you're in a season where you're just struggling to really connect with God and you're struggling to really have faith and trust in the goodness of God. But once again, as I said before, the good news, my friend, is that it is just that. It is a season. And just as easily as you got into it, God can bring you out of it. But, but, but there's some very practical, simple things that you have to do as a believer so that you can get back to that place where you are trusting and believing and loving on the God who saved you. If you found this video helpful in any way, feel free to share it with a friend. Also, if you haven't done so already, I would love it if you would subscribe. Check out some of the other videos on this channel. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time on The Beat.